the whole weekend's going to be just full of information and hello there welcome back to the homemade haven we are currently in the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia we are here to attend the Homesteaders of America conference and we're actually running a little late yeah, for so hit the truck running a little late for some workshops that we have going on today, but we are so excited to take you guys along on this long weekend as we attend some classes with our favorite YouTube homesteaders. Today, Robert is attending a class with Jason from Sow the Land. They are doing a woodworking class to build a produce washing table. And then I am attending a class with Kaylee from the Honeystead and learning how to take care of bees. So we are really excited about these classes. The whole weekend's gonna be just full of information and kind of rubbing elbows with some other like-minded individuals and we just can hardly wait. So we hope you guys enjoy coming along with us. And then this is a uh, this is a deep. Um, now these foundations that we use are uh, plastic. Again, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. Um, we have kind of leaned more towards this because it's easier for our buyers when they purchase their their nukes. Um, it's easier for them to see what's happening inside the hive. Um, and you know, but most of our nukes that we sell are, are uh, five frame deeps. So this is a deep, this is a medium. Actually, this frame is more of a honey super, but it's the same kind of the same concept. Um, this this plastic is wax coated, and there are some benefits. Um, whether you're going to go foundation list, which is I can take this thing out and let the bees naturally draw the comb that they want to, you know, that they want to build. Um, I will be honest, when we spin honey, it is a mess if you don't have a good foundation um, because it will literally just blow out of the frame. Um, but you're gonna, you're not gonna make the cuts for women. So, you know, there is that, so, you know, yay women. <laughs> um, but uh, what's amazing, this is something that I, I just, you know, from egg to emerging, uh, all that what's covering the honey we I basically ball up wrap it up in a cheese cloth I put it in a pot put some water in it I boil it down so that's another really fun thing about beekeeping is like once you're really getting into it like everything bees kind of just happens so hey did we have any more paper plates um underneath the middle one <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, we have 
in the summer. You see, it's hot in hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. So butchering, it makes it difficult to butcher. Yeah, butchering gets in there. Mm. Especially it's, hogs. <laughs> yeah, unless you have a walk-in or something big to use, you have like a two-month window to butcher. But we're just gonna, I'm gonna ball it up. What you're looking for is a nice, clean, white smoke. You don't want flames coming out of it, and you don't want, um, you don't want, you don't want to burn your bees when they're trying to do it. The smoke, actually, what it does to the bees, good question, because I did forget to add that. Um, the smoke makes them think that their hive is on fire. And so what that means is you're distracting them. So their goal is to then go ahead and eat honey um, and store up just in case that they need to escape. So it, it's more, it's not necessarily a calming effect. It, it just distracts them. Um, so it allows you to go in and get in there and do it do an inspection. Legit. <laughs> I have extra large okay. as well. You got short and chubby? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I got extra, extra large. <laughs> this is large? Yeah, she large. Do you think large maybe might not be big enough? No. Almost. Thick jeans, but these are pretty thick sweats. Okay. I mean, I'm saying I would. Could be. I would probably go ahead and do a suit just because. Okay. So another thing, uh, bears are black. Right. And so darker color. Okay, so they think. And I want might. them to be like. There's a bear coming in. I don't want them to think that they either. I don't want so. that to happen. <laughs> right. And I have a break. Go ahead and take it, and then come on inside. Okay. Watch this step right here. There's a bear. them locked down and this does not need to be this we can kind of move. Okay. So tips for when you're working your colony. That sticky propolis that I was talking about all along this side here. Um, whenever you're inspecting your bees, flip this up, make sure there's no queen on here. You're gonna set this aside. So I give it a brief look. I know she's not in here. I know she's probably down below. Um, so, and then I flip it around. I am very notorious for keeping the same routine. This tool stays in my right hand. Um, if I set it down, I'm, I lost it. So that looks like some nice little honey that these girls are working on. Mm, beautiful. So another really interesting fun tip, um, why I keep my this hive tool in my right hand is because the front of the hive, the front of this frame, go back. is going to stay in the same orientation. I'm not doing this. I'm not switching them up. This is their orientation. They already know. Um, if I go to flip it, I want to see what's going on on the other side. I just do a quick little rotate. Quick little rotate. I know this is all, this is not, um, there's no brood in this. Okay, here's a little bit of brood. All right, here we go. Um, so to get the brood out of the way, you can, and look, see that one right there? She's starting to come out. Can you see her right here? Look at her. And then we say happy birthday. <laughs> um, but she is, she's starting to emerge. There's another one. So that's why I'm probably not seeing as much brood on this because this frame, the timeline of when they were laid, um, it, it's now time for them to all open up. open up. 
If you are going to be a beekeeper for strictly honey, I would consider probably using a queen excluder, but we don't use them. And the reason why is because I don't want to limit the amount of space. I don't want to limit where she's going to go. Um, but that's just my personal. That's my personal. But even some brands that we have that aren't really have all of them, um, I might have to be too bad with, you know, it just depends. I just don't want to harvest so one. Yeah. Oh, she only harvests one. I only harvest one. Nice. You know, I feel like a, um, like a warrior. Can you, you take a picture of it? Because it's a lot yeah. of work, and I don't want to take away. Right? Up near the top in the middle. Yeah, right oh yeah, yeah. What I want you to see, see how all the bees move away from her. They're like, okay, mama. Uh -huh. We know what you're doing. So I, um, this video, you, it's out there. I, I, it's my September swarm. But I'll, if you never smelt real beeswax, I strongly encourage you to smell this because the smell will permeate and it'll stay. There, there we go. Is that the way to do it? Yeah. You just, just curve it. <laughs> it's not cracking like I thought it would. Well, That's it. very bendy. It is. We only need about a three ounce piece. So. Oh, he's got it. Man, it he's just bends. It. That's, not, it. that's not enough. Wow. Okay, hold on. That with this might do it. Okay. Oh, a little bit more. A little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> oh, yep, that, I meant to do one too and it came yeah. out too. So, we're getting there. We got a bath over yeah. here. It's going to be a bit of water. Perfect. I like that one too. So, what you do is you get in here. Get your bed, get your bed. Just coming right now. They have some of these things that are heated knives. Yeah. And, and they're nice too, but this we found this one and it seemed like it worked pretty really good okay. you know now once again you don't lose anything because it all goes in here and then we filter it out just essentially okay see how it's uncapped now and straining yeah. it and that's what you know where it does and it keeps it pretty clean there's a really interesting article i think i'm going to share it mm -hmm. but it talks about the ways that they're they can yeah. get around okay. regulating them we're going to need that off for right now. I'm going to spin it really slow. It takes anywhere between 6 and 10 minutes, depending on how fast you're going to go. Now, what, um, okay, so it's really critical you keep this thing clean and you make sure that it's dry. Yeah, because again, moisture and we'll get in it. This thing were full, it'd be pouring out. Ready? But isn't that color gorgeous? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you want to do this? No, that's the back. Yep. Here you can put your mind. And then here's the front. So real honey will crystallize. Okay, just letting you guys know that if it's kept in a cold area, it will crystallize. Um, all you have to do is put it in a window. Warm it up. Don't put it in the microwave. Just put it in the window. So. Wow, that was an incredible day. I am just feeling so lucky that we were able to take part in something like this um, you may have seen a few familiar faces if you watch homestead youtubers um, Mike Dixon the fit farmer was there really cool guy um, and then of course Kaylee from the honeystead just amazing wealth of knowledge her and her mom and dad um, taught the class today and it was just so incredible I learned a lot and we got to do a lot of hands-on learning which is my favorite learning style um, but now I am heading back to the fairgrounds where Robert and Reagan have been today they actually they took the woodworking um, workshop there today and their class has been over for uh, 
probably four hours and they've been stranded. Uh, we only brought one vehicle up with us and we weren't aware that um, the classes were going to be separated like this. Um, so I'm kind of out here on a hope and a prayer and just um, believing that I'm going to find my way back to them. I have zero signal on my phone so my GPS is not working and um, thankfully Robert's truck comes equipped with a um, his little map that's in the truck and it leaves these little like cookie crumbs whenever you're driving down the road so you can like retrace your your steps because otherwise I would have no idea where I was and that's um, something that I will definitely take into consideration driving in a rural area by myself um, from now on so hopefully Robert and Reagan aren't too upset having to sit there at the fairgrounds for hours on end. Um, apparently his phone is dying. I'm sure Reagan's phone is dead. She's probably been watching Spongebob or something on it. So we'll see. But um, anyway, overall just awesome class today. I can't wait to hear about Robert and Reagan's class and um, take you guys along for the rest of the weekend. pre-drill it still where you just drill the holes so that way it has less it, it might still crack but it might be less likely that it will so I would just if you need to do it here it has has the different angles right here. We have, um, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And so, you know, with a with a miter saw, it's already kind of on there and you can kind of, just, you just move the miter saw to whatever angle you want. You move it, click it in, and then just chop. Here, there's like a pivot point right here. Here it even says pivot. And there's like a little indent right there. And so if you put that on your wood and you move this, like say you want it 20 degrees, you move it where that 20 degree line is, and then that's a 20 degree angle. And so that's where you want to cut it. If you want it 20 degrees, that's 45 degrees. We are back at our little farmhouse Airbnb and just taking it easy. It's been a really long day and just wanted to get Robert and Reagan's thoughts on their workshop and what they thought about it. So how was it? Uh, workshop was great. We did the how to build or, or woodworking with Jason Contreras. 
from So the Land. I don't know if I said his name right. Uh, but Jason from So the Land. Um, it was a good small class. It was very hands-on. Everybody got a chance to use the tools if they wanted to. Um, and then after that, we got to hang around and uh, fellowship with the guys that were in the class or the people that were in the class. Uh, with Jason, his wife. Um, very down-to-earth. And then after that, um, workshop was over. Um, Reagan and I stayed at the fairgrounds for a few hours while we waited on Brooke to come get us. Um, the fairgrounds were nice. Everybody was there starting to set up their tents and booths for the actual conference, which starts tomorrow. Um, overall, it was a good day, good weather, good people. Highly recommend it. What'd you think, Ray? It was cool. What was your favorite part? Um, I liked whenever they were doing like the chicken wire on the table. They had like a gun and it was really cool. It was like kind of like, I guess it was a staple gun, but it was different. And you got to see a couple of the other workshops going on mm -hmm. around too. Yeah. Anything cool? Um, there was a rabbit butchering workshop. Yeah? Mm-hmm. What do you think? Would you do that? Um, I wouldn't do the part where they kill them, but I would, like, skin them and everything. Yeah. Thank it was you. it was so satisfying whenever they just, like, peeled the skin off. <laughs> I'd say overall a really great first day today. Yeah, I agree. I look forward to the next couple days and what else we'll learn and do. But for tonight, we are going to get some sleep. Going to get some rest. We're tired. It's been a long day. Only so, two days. Um, we'll catch up with you guys in the morning. Yep. Good night. Good night.